So yes, it has been a hot minute since I've done a thriller and horror wrap up. And before anyone panics, don't worry, I've got one right here. I have some great books to talk about. But basically this year, I made myself a promise that I wouldn't force myself to read horror and thriller books I wasn't enjoying just for the sake of putting out content. It's something that a lot of booktubers talk about. There definitely is a pressure to read. And just for various reasons, I didn't find myself having enough books to make a video. And absolutely, I could have just randomly picked up books to force myself to do a wrap up. But instead, I want to bring you quality content, not just quantity. Well, I do that anyway, but you know what I mean. So I decided that I'll be posting horror and thriller wrap ups when I have some great books to recommend to you all. And I think I have some great new books, new to me, some new releases, some recent releases, and I can't wait to talk about them all. Let's get started. First, let's talk about A Child Among Strangers. This is a horror book that I received from a subscriber who sent it to me for review. And basically, this is a 2022 release that I was dying to read and never got my hands on a review copy, so I'm really grateful to have a chance here. In the story, we follow a young boy, I think he's about nine years old, and right at the beginning of the story, something horrific happens to his family, there is an accident, and he survives, but in the accident, something happens and he ends up having some sort of supernatural abilities when he comes out of a coma and so he has the ability to read people's minds and within the story there is actually a kidnapping plot so there are some really bad men within the story that kidnap him take him away and we follow the story from there this is a horror story that obviously blends together a lot of thriller elements i happen to really love kidnapping fiction so the fact that that was really central to the story immediately pulled me in and i also do enjoy the tropes of of a young child with supernatural abilities is something we see a lot in horror but it's one that I've really grown to love and I just do not mind. This book in terms of writing and style reminded me a lot of Stephen King and particularly the things I like about Stephen King's work so if you're a diehard fan of his I do think you should go check out this author and I gotta say that this book was gripping as I mentioned the bad guys in this book are really really bad. Within this book they certainly throw around a lot of bad language and things to really stereotype them as the evil guys but I do think it fits within the story story. It makes sense what the author is trying to do. I found the main character to be very likable, this young boy, but also the perspective of his adopted parents as they, of course, are fearful for him in this situation. You're trying to figure out what is going to happen. And then again, this is also a horror book, so it had, does have some supernatural elements. I'll kind of leave it for you to discover what they are. But I do like that this book has a lot going on. It reads in my mind of what I describe as epic horror, where it has grand scope. It's not just a really intimate story, but despite having some good character work, there's a lot happening. It's a very large book. It's pretty long and I'm not entirely sure if it perfectly comes together at the end. I was reasonably satisfied with the story. I liked it a lot and enjoyed the journey to get to the end but a book like this is just hard to nail the ending and I'm not sure they quite did but I still love this book a whole lot despite it not being perfect because I'm not quite sure what that perfect ending would have looked like. So highly recommend this book. I thought it was fantastic. It definitely was the sleeper hit from 2022 that I never got my hands on because needless to say if I had it likely would have ended up on my top books of last year. So definitely go check it out if you also missed it. And next up, we have Claw Heart Mountain by David Offengrad. And this is a book that I received for review from the publisher, CamCat Books. And this is a horror thriller that follows a group of young people, college students that are going away for kind of a last hurrah. They are gonna go and party at this cabin. When they are headed there, however, they come across this vehicle that is broken down. And inside, they find a lot of money. And so, of course, as poor college students, they decide to take advantage of the situation and take the money for themselves. So this, as I mentioned, is technically a horror books so I think you want to know that going into it because just from the premise alone it certainly sounds like a straight up thriller but there is more going on here I want to leave that for you to discover for yourself I enjoyed this one I think the challenge with a book like this is often what I say about the genre is that it's written with a group of young people that are kind of unlikable and it's sort of done on purpose because it kind of turns into like survival horror where you don't really like the characters so you're kind of okay with bad things happening to them but it's also hard because if the characters aren't unlikable sometimes you just don't really care what happens so basically you want that level of investment but you don't want to be so heartbroken if bad things happen and I feel like this book sort of hit it and kind of missed the mark all at the same time. I liked it. I didn't love it. It hit on a lot of the tropes I enjoy. So I do think if you're looking for a fast page turner, something fun, if this sounds up your alley, you might want to check it out, especially if you're kind of in a slumpy mood and need something really fast paced. Next up is The Lake of the Dead, and this is a horror mystery that I received from a subscriber who wanted me to check this out. This, I understand, is a classic Norwegian story that I'd never heard about before. I never got the opportunity to read, so I'm really grateful that I got a chance once again to check it out. This is like the video 
of wonderful opportunities. So basically within the story, it is set at this cabin where you find out years ago there was this madman who went about killing his sister and her lover and then proceeded to kill himself and he threw, I believe, everyone in the lake. And then as you imagine, this cabin well might be haunted. And now in the present day, there is a writer who is going to this cabin despite everyone telling him not to because he wants the quiet, he wants to be able to read and write and do his work. And of course, terrible things start to happen. So I will admit, as you can probably guess from that synopsis, that this book is very tropey. It's very classic in terms of horror. And that is to be expected. Again, this is, I understand, a very classic Norwegian story. It's one that's very beloved. And so I really appreciate getting that perspective and getting to see a classic that isn't perhaps a North American classic. So if you're looking for something like totally innovative, breaking all the tropes and doing something out of left field, you're not going to get that here. But this book is really well done. It's cozy. It's quaint. Obviously, it's translated, but I thought that the translated work was really pleasing to read. I found it to be just very enjoyable. And again, it felt like reading like a new Rosemary's Baby. It felt like an instant classic. I can see why it's so beloved. And as I mentioned, it's technically a horror story, but it kind of leans into more of a mystery narrative. And I do love both genres, so I didn't really mind that mashup. And I highly recommend this one. If you're looking for something, in my opinion, a little bit more underhyped if you don't come from Norway, this is a great one to check out. And next up is All Hallows by Christopher Golden. This is the one that I received as an audiobook for review. And in the story, we follow a group of teenagers in the 1980s, and this book is set on Halloween. So we're following them as they're getting prepared to go out to this Halloween party. And the story is told from multiple perspectives, so we get to see what is going on within each teenager's head, and the story proceeds from there. This is one where I was very excited for the setup. I do have a soft spot for the 80s. I do think it's a great point of nostalgia, and the author definitely leans into those elements. At times, I felt like it was a little bit hard-handed in terms of really really just throwing these references at the reader and hoping that they're going to hit on some nostalgic button for them. So I did wish that the book had been a little bit more toned down in those elements. Mostly I found this book to be fine, but it kind of lacked plot. And that's to say that it's very slow paced, but there really isn't the payoff or build that you would expect for a book that is labeled as being a horror book. And so I definitely feel like it's kind of a coming of age, slice of life, spending time with a group of young people on Halloween. It's the kind of book that I think will appeal to people who read horror, but if you're looking for a horror book in and of itself, I do think this book may let some readers down. I was kind of indifferent to it, and it hasn't left a really strong impression on me. So just keep that in mind if you decide to pick it up. Next, up is The Babysitter by Joyce Carol Oates and this is a 2022 release once again one that I did not get to in time for my end of the year video but this is one I wanted to check out because I've only read one other book by her and that is Zombie which is a really iconic serial killer narrative that I didn't totally love so I kind of left that book thinking that this author wasn't for me and then I read Babysitter. This story follows a town where there is a serial killer on the loose known as the babysitter because they steal away children and then the story is told primarily from the perspective of a young mother and wife. She is unhappy in her marriage, and at the beginning of the story, we follow her as she is sneaking off to a hotel to go and sleep with a man that is not her husband. And at the same time, in the background of the story, you have this plot that you know that there is a serial killer on the loose that is targeting children, but she isn't overly concerned for her own children for various reasons, and the story spirals from there. Let me say that if you've never read Joyce Carol Oates before, you do want to check out her prose because they're very unique. At first, I found them to be a bit off putting, but I ended up actually switching to the audiobook version for this one, and getting to hear her prose read aloud completely changed my opinion on that. I definitely would love to go back and experience her previous work, Zombie, on audio if it's available, just because I think that that was what I found so challenging the first time, is that I couldn't really get into the narrative. So I do think her style is not for everyone, and while I'm putting this in my dark fiction video, I do want to acknowledge that this book and her work in general is very literary, so if that is something that kind of turns you off, if you're more of a genre fiction fan, you just love a good slasher, things like that. This one may not hit the mark for you, but I ended up really enjoying it. It was just very compelling. It was very interesting. It has surprisingly low ratings on Goodreads, and I'm not entirely sure if that's because of the fact that this book handles a lot of sensitive material. Definitely some difficult choices that the author and characters make, and no one is that likable. And definitely this book uses certain forms of sexual assault and violence towards women and children and so forth to advance the plot. So I do see that this book can be considered problematic if you're looking at that from that angle. But as a thriller narrative, it was very compelling. It was very disturbing. It was very off kilter. And basically what I like so much about it 
is that it felt very unconventional. I had no idea where the narrative was going. At this point, I've read so many thrillers and I'm really tired of the tried and true narrative that I feel like every single publishing house and imprint puts out and they just give you this cookie cutter formula of having a certain domestic wife doing certain things and the story going from there. And while this book in terms of premise sounds like one of those books, it ended up being something totally different. I'm not saying this book is perfect. I didn't give it five stars, I gave it four. I can totally see what other people wouldn't like it. I do see that the book has problems. I think it lacks some sensitivity that could make this book hard for people to read if they have certain content issues. But was it a book that stuck with me? Absolutely. I, I definitely want to reread it. I would love to read more about this author. Completely changed my mind on Joyce Carol Oates. So if you have read her before, please let me know where should I go from here because I'd love to read more of her backlist now. Next, I read Such Sharp Teeth by Rachel Harrison. And this is a werewolf story that follows a woman who right at the beginning of the story gets into an accident. She is attacked by what she says is a bear, but is actually a werewolf. And from there, she starts to notice that she has different abilities, that she's starting to act like a werewolf. She's starting to have all of these stereotypical things that werewolves have in experience. It's happening to her. And so she eventually comes to terms and tells her sister about this. Her sister is dealing with a pregnancy that she's not quite sure how she feels about it. And she also has a very difficult relationship with her mother because of choices that were made years ago. This book does contain content warnings for child abuse and situations surrounding that. So if that's something difficult for you, you may want to pass on this book. But despite those content warnings, most of this book felt really light and fluffy. To me, while this is technically horror because it involves werewolves, it read much more like contemporary fiction. And that's kind of where this book stopped working for me. I don't read a lot of that genre. And if anything, I would describe this book as like if Taylor Jenkins read, if you're familiar with her as an author, if she wrote a werewolf book, I feel like she would have wrote this one because this book is very centered around the female experience, sisterhood, mother-daughter relationships, the challenges of being pregnant and not just loving your pregnancy and so motherhood and all these kind of topical issues tied in together. And then you kind of every once in a while remember that this woman is now a werewolf and they kind of deal with that, but in like a funny jokey way that never feels very serious. So if you can't tell, this book is not scary. I barely would recommend it as a horror book. It's really not. But if you do want to check it out, it is pretty cute and cozy. I flew through it in a day while I was like decluttering my house because it was just easy to read the audio. So if you want to try it out for yourself, go for it, but just know what you're getting yourself into. Finally, I want to mention once again that I am working my way through the collection of Sherlock Holmes stories and I want to just mention a couple that I particularly loved. If you have never read these stories before, they are worth your time. I never have. I've seen some of the adaptations and I like them, but I was nervous to go to the original work because I'm not always a fan of classics. Sometimes the writing is too old-timey for my modern brain, but I'm happy to say that these books are really approachable. They really do stand the test of time and I found the characters to be so compelling. So our modern understanding of Sherlock Holmes in like modern retellings is surprisingly true to the real original character that was created. I love his eccentricities. I love the fact that he is so brilliant, how he makes deductions. He's quirky. He's strange. And I like the perspective of Watson as his companion, getting to see Sherlock through Watson's mind and writing, I think just really adds to the story of giving a unique perspective there. And I enjoy actually the mysteries themselves. They're compelling. I want to know what was going to happen. So for those interested in jumping into his work, I would personally recommend starting with the story A Study in Scarlet, because that one is basically the setup to Sherlock Holmes. It shows how Watson and Sherlock got together. So it's like watching the first episode of Sherlock or so forth. And it was really great to see them come together. The mystery itself, again, stood on its own. It was very interesting. And I enjoyed quite a few of the stories I've read, although probably my favorite, not surprisingly, is a pretty beloved one is The Hound of the Baskervilles, which I would argue is actually quite different than some of the other ones because it has more of a potential supernatural tone. You're not really sure if the creature is real or or if it's something going on. And despite having watched a lot of Sherlock mysteries, I didn't actually know what the original story was supposed to be about. I've kind of seen different versions of it. And so I once again went in not knowing the twist, not knowing the twists and turns and surprises, and had a lot of fun getting there. So those are my personal places to start and what book to work up to. That one's my favorite so far. And so I'd love to hear from those of you that have read a lot more Sherlock Holmes than I, because I fully admit I have not finished the collection at all. I'm kind of jumping around to some of the more iconic ones. So let me know in the comments what is your favorite Sherlock Holmes story or novel and I will definitely check that one out if I haven't yet. 
and as my booktube shout out today I want to talk about Jason from Jason Weird Reads and as his channel title suggests he loves to read a weird fiction so that is a combination of horror, science fiction, he also loves fantasy and he just loves his books really weird. He along with Crystal, a booktuber I recently shouted out, are doing a weird readathon so if you want to check them out I definitely recommend it and it looks like a lot of fun. I don't read as much weird fiction as I would imagine that I do. I always think that I must love weird books but I actually haven't read a lot of that subgenre so if you're like myself looking to get into it, I definitely recommend checking out his channel. I love him. He's a really nice guy and has great recommendations to boot. So that is it for this video here. I'd love to know of the books I talked about. Which ones are you planning on checking out for yourself? And please let me know what is a recent horror thriller book that you have read, whether it's a new release or not, that you think I should read. Because again, I want to come back on a regular basis with these horror and thriller videos. But in order to do so, I want to find books that I'm really passionate about rather than books that are just okay. Because honestly, I think these videos are most fun when I have really strong recommendations, books that I'm honestly enthused about, and not just politely giving three-star mediocre reviews. If you're here for more video content like this, if you want to get more recommendations, I do read a lot of thrillers, horror, science fiction, fantasy, and true crime, so if you want to stick around and subscribe, I appreciate that so much. You can help me out with this video by giving a thumbs up, dropping a comment, even if it's just a ghost or a man with a detective hat like Sherlock Holmes, and if you want to hit the little notification bell, you'll never miss another video from me. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.